Welcome to the recording audio tutorial. So today I'll be going over the different audio tracks and I'll be recording audio using a microphone. So as you can see, just as a reminder, we're in the tracking window set. And right now we're looking to record into audio one. If you look to the left of the word audio that I've just highlighted, there's one line which means that that's a mono audio track. That means it's just one signal source. This one here on audio nine is a stereo track, two audio sources, typically left and right. But that's not necessarily the case with some instruments, all right? Great, so what we're gonna do is I'm going to show you exactly how you can record audio in a very, very musical way so that you don't have the technology getting in the way of your inspiration. First off, I'm just going to review all the different tabs and buttons that are associated with audio in the tracks view window. This arms the track. As you can hear, we're getting a little bit of a doubling here. This is a monitoring mode, which is similar to arming a track, except that when you press the main record button on the transport window, you'll hear what it sounds like in terms of the monitoring, but you won't be recording onto that track. In this case, audio one. This is the play or mute, whatever is happening on that track. Okay. If we have loops enabled, and I'm going to have a whole chapter on that later, this turns that on or off. Essentially, you can loop one section in the track, and uh, you don't need to destroy the audio. You just do a simple drag and point and click, and you can loop it. Really great feature in Digital Performer, which I will go over later. So I'm going to arm this track. I'm going to mute the return of the track so we don't have to hear it back okay because uh, we're hearing ourselves right now through other means as you can see my audio monitor right now is showing what my levels are based on the distance i have from the microphone okay i'm just going to do a little test here seems pretty good okay so i need a click track I'm going to choose the BPMs here. I'm going to use the tap pad. I'm just going to tap one, two, three, four, and it gives me the it gives me the closest average to what I tapped into it. So 83 BPM. All right. I'm going to give myself a two bar count off. You can change the length of this two bar count off over here by just clicking it twice. Okay. See, it says two. We're just going to keep it that way. I'm going to go done. By the way, that was the preferences uh, window, and I had uh, done another tutorial on that, so you will uh, you will uh, refer to that if you have any questions regarding how the preferences work. So refer to that if you have any questions regarding how the preferences work. Okay, I'm not going to punch in a record or anything like that. I'm just going to just record first. Okay, so here we go. All right, so I got that audio there. And we're going to play it back. So I'm going to disarm the track. I'm going to unmute the track and go back to the start of the session. Actually, I can turn this off. Okay, so that's mission accomplished. Remember to go Apple S, which which means safe. All right, now there's more than one way to record audio into a session. We just recorded a, a loop, so to speak. 
But let's just say that we wanted to punch in at the end of this, okay? So we go record, punch in. Four, it ends at five, nice and clean. All right, yep. Just press enter. As you can see, these two arrows moved there. So all you have to do, okay, is just press record. There we go, we did that little punch in. Let's see what it sounds like if, if I did a good job or not. Okay, okay. That, that's acceptable, all right. Now, what you could do is highlight that region that you punched in by pressing control F, you get the fader function, okay? So you might want to put some crossfades between that new audio and the old audio. The milliseconds before and the milliseconds after just basically tell you how big that fade will be. I'm going to pick something smaller. 25, 25. I press OK or Enter. And then it should be seamless. So let's go back and take a listen. Alright, well I want to take that little stop out there, so I'm just going to highlight that bar. Alright, I put my mouse there and just press left click and then I'm going to press delete. Okay, now let's just say that I like this loop so much, okay, that I want to repeat it. There's more than one way to do this. Of course you can use the looping function which we'll go over later, but I'm just going to show you a basic editing feature that's really, really useful. I'm going to press Apple L, okay, sorry that's for shifting. Apple R, there we go, for repeat, okay, and we can repeat that, let's just say, three times, okay, and let's just say that in that repeat, because I was getting ahead of myself before, I want to shift that region, so I just highlight it, then I go Apple L, and I can move it over, let's just say, two measures over, or I could even move it over two beats, All right? So your options are great there. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we are going to actually undo what we did and we're going to save it and remember when you're recording audio you can again fade these all together by doing control F it remembers the previous millisecond splice that you had input before. There you go. And that is our first audio recording. And we need to build on this, so we need to add other parts. So I'm going to add some audio and MIDI parts. And uh, I'm going to do that myself. And uh, I will see you in the next tutorial, which is the MIDI tutorial, where we're going to add some more parts.